Which creature originating in China increases its size 10,000 times, lays 500 eggs in five days, and eats 3,500 pounds of the same diet during its one month long life? It is common knowledge that the production of silk originated in China and that silk is made from silkworms. But what many people don't realize is that a silkworm isn't actually a worm at all. It's a caterpillar called Bombyx mori. And during the short month which comprises the silkworm's entire lifespan, it will increase in size 10,000 times, constantly eating up to 3,500 pounds of mulberry leaves before spinning its cocoon. 500 eggs are laid in just five days before the moth dies. The resulting larvae or silkworms must be kept at ambient temperatures and are fed exclusively on a diet of mulberry leaves for one month by which time they are strong and fat enough to spend three or four days spinning their cocoon. They can produce up to 15 meters of filament a minute, and it's the combination of their diet and the sticky liquid protein which they secrete that helps them produce the luxurious and tightly constructed sheath. The single strand of silk that forms the cocoon is about one mile long. The silk making process known as sericulture first began in Neolithic China 5,000 years ago. According to legend, the princess Si Ling Shu discovered that a cocoon could be unravelled to produce a thread when one dropped into her tea whilst she sat under a mulberry tree. The earliest existing example of this fine fabric comes from the city of Rongyang in Henan province and is a woven silk wrap for a child's body dating back to 3630 BC. In addition to clothing, Silk in China was also utilized for a number of other applications, including writing material. Chinese paper makers developed new techniques for the creation of luxurious paper by combining silk with natural fiber to produce paper. During the Tang Dynasty, the color of silk clothing held great social importance and was a guide of social class. The art of sericulture remained solely within China until 552 AD when the Byzantine Emperor Justinian sent two monks to China to find out the secret. On the promise of great rewards, they returned with their precious eggs hidden in their bamboo canes. Nowadays, the process of sericulture begins when the cocoons are baked in the oven to kill the silkworm and then dipped in hot water to loosen the filaments before being carefully unwound, a labor-intensive process. Each cocoon produces an astonishing 900 meters of a single thread and five to eight of these threads are spun together to make the yarn, which is then pounded to make it softer. Prism-like structure of the fibre allows it to take dye particularly well, in addition to generating different colours within the fabric because light is refracted at various angles. Because no single fibre is exactly the same, silk is a versatile fabric which can be very fine in texture, for instance for clothing, or thick for use in making upholstery. It's used in parachutes, bike tires, surgical thread, disposable cups, and silk rope is stronger than an equally thick metal wire, a dazzling thought. Around the world, the production of silk is an important means of income. 34 million people are directly dependent on sericulture, which means that the farming and weaving of silk provides a global buffer against poverty in many rural communities. China is still the world's number one country for producing silk, at 150,000 metric tons annually, this represents a massive 78% of the world's silk. As for the silkworm, today the moths live only in captivity, as they have become so domesticated that they can no longer survive independently in the wild. But as it takes 1,700 to 2,000 cocoons to make just one silk dress, there's no chance that this extraordinary and very hungry creature is ever going to become extinct. I'm Tasman Little, violinist, recording artist and culture contributor for The China Current.